What's going on guys, Ness here. And today, I got a little bit of a follow-up video that I wanted to do on the Retro Arcade Mini Tabletop Arcade Console. It appears a custom firmware was developed for this thing, and I'm really glad to see that this thing is getting some type of community support, because I think it's a pretty badass little console. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this custom firmware, and then we're gonna mess around with it for a little bit and see what it can actually do. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a micro SD card. I have a 32 gigabyte one right here in front of me, but a 16 gigabyte one would be just fine. Then you're going to want to go ahead and download the image file for the custom firmware. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Then you're going to want to go ahead and write the image file onto your SD card using a program like Win32 Disk Imager or Etcher or something of that nature. Once that's all set, go ahead and grab your retro arcade and flip it over on its backside. There are these four little rubber feet on the bottom of it that kind of keep it in place when it's on the tabletop. They pop right out, revealing screws underneath. Go ahead and remove these four screws. Remove the small screw, keeping the battery in place, and then go ahead and take out the battery. Once the four screws are removed, go ahead and pop the console open, and it should reveal the board. Once looking at the board, you'll see a thin piece of foam. Go ahead and peel that back, and it'll reveal the system's SD card. Carefully remove the console's SD card, and replace it with the SD card that you just wrote the custom firmware image on. Close everything back up and fire up the console. It's that simple. The first thing you'll notice is that the home screen on this image is really clean and organized. Right from the start, we can see that this custom firmware comes loaded with an Atari Lynx emulator, a Commodore 64 emulator, Final Burn Alpha, Game Boy Advance emulator, a Game Boy emulator, a Sega Master System emulator, a Nintendo Entertainment System emulator, a Super NES emulator, Wonderswan, and ZX Spectrum. This thing is still kind of in its early stages. I believe they are planning on adding some more emulators in the future. The firmware also comes with some fully working versions of games like Cave Story, Quake, and EC Wolf. Here I am running Quake on the thing, and I must admit, it's pretty damn cool. Using the Final Burn Alpha emulator, here I am playing some Street Fighter Alpha 3. It runs beautifully. NES emulation runs flawlessly as well on this custom. I think this little console is great. It's perfectly fine and playable the way that it is, but with this custom firmware, it makes an already good console all that much better. 
I can't wait to see what new additions they add to this in the future. Hopefully they add some support for some more emulators. I was a little disappointed to not see a Mega Drive slash Genesis emulator on here, but I hope that that's something that they're working on. And hopefully down the line, maybe we could see something like PS1 or something like this. I think this thing is powerful enough to run some PlayStation 1 games. But I guess only time will tell. Let me know what you guys think of this custom firmware. And if you guys are interested in a retro arcade, I'll put links to it in the description below as well. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.